we're going to create with the calculator, the TI-84 or 83 calculator, um, we're going to create a scatter diagram or uh, also called a scatter plot with two lists. We're going to start by putting the data into the two lists. So press stat. Um, if you already have data in lists, you may want to clear them out or you can just use empty lists. I'm going to clear out L1 and L2 and I'm going to put the data in L1 and L2. With name highlighted at the top, you can press the clear button and then enter and your list will be cleared. So going back to L1, I'm going to put data in. Uh, the data values for L1 correspond to the x, uh, the x coordinate of the ordered pairs for the set of data. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the L2 is going to correspond to the y coordinate of the ordered pair. And we have 170, 200, 240, 300, 310, and 290. Okay. It's important that once the data is in the list that you do not sort the lists because you want to maintain the structure of the ordered pairs. Okay, so knowing now that L1 contains our X values and L2 contains our Y values, we're going to set up the settings for the scatter diagram. We hit the second key and then Y equals, which takes us to stat plot, and we're going to turn one of the plots on. Actually, it looks like number three is on. I'm going to turn them all off and then I'm going to turn on number one, plot number one. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter with plot one highlighted, enter, and it's off, so if I hit enter, I'm going to turn it on. And on the type, we're going to use this first one here. This is the scatter diagram. Um, the points there represent the points on the graph. So we hit enter on that. And you see X list and Y list show up down here. Automatically, we have L1, L2. And those happen to be where my X and Y values are. So I could just leave that set at L1 and L2. The mark, you have a choice of three marks. This is the way the points are going to show up on the picture, on the scatter diagram. Um, this is the default. You can do a plus or you can do a small dot. I'm going to keep it at the default. Enter. And that's the setup for the scatter diagram. So you want to make sure it's on. You want to make sure the type is the scatter diagram. You want to make sure L1 and L2 are in your X list and Y list, respectively. And you want to set the mark to whatever choice you make. Most students. Uh, the error that they find when they are running scatter diagrams is that they choose the wrong list here. So uh, that's one of the biggest errors that students make and the next biggest error is having the wrong type set in the type of graph you want to create. But we're all correct now. We're going to hit zoom and number nine is zoom stat. Nine zoom stat and enter. And each of the dots here represent an ordered pair x, comma, y. If we want to navigate through the, the ordered pairs, we can hit the trace button and use the arrow keys. And um, you see the first, uh, the first dot is flashing here. It tells us that we have the ordered pair x equal 1, y equal 170. And if we use the right arrow, it takes us to x equal 2, y equals 200. And we can navigate through the entire scatter diagram in this fashion all the way to the end. So that's a useful way for you to examine the data on your scatter diagram. Okay. After your data is uh, plotted in a scatter diagram, we're going to look at what the correlation coefficient for this data is. That's the R value for the sample data. Um, this 
the appearance of this data looks like it's positively correlated because the dots are moving in an upward fashion towards the right from the bottom on the left to the top on the right and and just to get a strength of how strong that positive correlation is we look at the r value and the closer r is to positive 1 the closer the stronger the positive correlation is and if this were a negative correlation we would expect an r that's negative and the closer r would be to negative 1 would tell us how strong that negative correlation is now to figure out what r is we have a tool on the calculator called linreg stands for linear regression before you run linreg there's a there's a setting that you have to have on we're going to run go to the catalog so we're going to do second and zero this is the catalog and we're going to go to the d's for diagnostics so if we hit here's the d it's the main it's the x to the negative one or the matrix key hit enter here and now we're in the D's and if you move downward you'll see diagnostics on okay hit enter on that and enter again and once this is set you never have to reset this the calculator remembers it unless you reset your calculator this setting is always on until you turn it off linear regression is um, stat, go over to calc, and we're going to use option number four. There's another linear regression option down further, but this is the one that I'm going to use, linreg ax plus b. Hit enter, and now separated by commas, you're going to put the two lists where x and y data values are in. So second L1, this is where the first list is second L2, this is where the second list is, enter. And the output of the screen gives us some important pieces of information. R is the correlation coefficient. It tells us how close to perfect our positive correlation is in this case. And it is 0.86. It goes on a little further, but if you round to two decimal places, you have 0.86. Um, the correlation co uh, the cor the excuse me, the coefficient of determination is r squared, and that's 0.74. And if we need to interpret the meaning of that, we say that 74% of the variability in the y value, in the, in the y variable, which is grass density, can be accounted for by the variability in the x variable. So in just concisely, we say 74% of the variability in grass density can be accounted for by the variability in seed density. The remaining 26% is coming from unexplained factors that are outside the scope of the problem. So things like weather, um, seed quality perhaps, you can only speculate on the factors that would change the seed density and the grass density. So that's outside the scope of the problem, so you could, only, uh, you could only assume that what those values are. Okay. Um, also on the screen, you have the values for A and B. A, 21.79, when rounded to two decimal places, and B is 170, which makes our linear equation 21.79x plus 170. Now, we're going to put that into y equals 21.79x plus 170. Okay, I missed the x, so let's try that again. 21.79x plus 170. And we're going to graph this, so press the graph button, and we should see a line form along our points. Yep, right through the points. That's the line of best fit. And if you did this properly, um, the line of best fit should be positioned so that it's fit pretty equidistantly between all the points, both above the line and below the line. 
And that's the linear equation that you're going to use to predict values based on the sample data. Okay, and that is how you create a scatter diagram. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you at the next video.